Hello, beautiful calculus students. We are finally finishing up chapter 9, and we're on chapter 9, section B, and this one covers uh, the last important theorem for this section in this chapter, and that is expansion of what's called the binomial series. And this is introduced through example 4, where it says find the Maclaurin series for uh, a binomial to some power, right? Like 1 plus x to, you know, cubed. You know, we've seen this many times, like in, uh, in Algebra 2, you might see a function y equals 1 plus x squared or something like that, something very simple. But we're going to look at the general binomial, right? This is called a, a binomial, and there are binomial theorems about the expansion of this. But let's just go ahead and look at this example. Again, we're looking at f of x equals 1 plus x to the k power, and we're doing the Maclaurin, so we need to do a bunch of derivatives on this. And I'll be kind of sloppy with my notation right now, just to, for the, the interest of being quick about this. So we have 1 plus x to the k minus 1. Second derivative is k times, well, times this. So it's k times k, oops, go back to black, times k minus 1, times 1 plus x to the k minus 2, minus 2. Um, next derivative, third derivative, we see kind of a neat little pattern forming here. This is going to be k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 times 1 plus x to the k minus 3. You might be able to predict the uh, nth derivative, right? Let's, you know, dot, dot, dot. The nth derivative is going to be k times k minus 1 dot, 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 all the way down to k minus n plus 1 times 1 plus x to the k minus n. Got all that? Why is it a k minus n plus 1? Well, because here, for our zeroth derivative, there wasn't a k at all. And for our first derivative, there was a k. So there must be n terms here starting with k minus 0, so it's going to be, you know, the first derivative is k minus, you know, this one is really k minus 0, and so when we get down to k minus n, it's really going to be, you know, for the nth, the nth derivative, it's not k minus n, because again, the first derivative has a k minus 0, so it's k minus n plus 1. Okay, and so this is a Maclaurin, so maybe over here I'll squeeze the f of, I'll give myself some more room, I'll squeeze the f of 0 into these things. So the f of 0 obviously is just x, and the f prime at 0 is k, oops, not x, this is not x, it's just 1, right? Because uh, for the Maclaurin, x is 0, you know, 0. 0, okay, all the way around, those are zeros. So the f of 0 is 1. f prime of 0 is k, f double prime is k times k minus 1, and all the way down here, let me squeeze this in, the f nth derivative evaluated at 0 is just a whole string of k terms, k, k minus 1, dot, 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 all the way down to this thing. Okay, so our series has this very interesting appearance. Remember, we're getting the Maclaurin series for 1 plus x to the k power. And so putting all those terms, you know, putting all of these terms in there, it's going to be 1, let's go back to uh, black, uh, 1 times x to the 0 over 0 factorial. Remember all those terms from Maclaurin, the x to the n is 0 or the n factorials, plus, what's the next term? It is k times x to the 1 over 1 factorial, plus k times k minus 1 times x squared over 2 factorial. Okay, all these pieces together. We can get down to our, our nth term on this expansion. We'll get a k times k minus 1, dot, 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 k plus n, oops, sorry, k minus n plus 1 times x to the n over n factorial, right? Again, remembering 
McLaurin's have all of these terms in there, right? And that's it. That is our binomial expansion. This, again, is pretty cool. This is the binomial series. Okay. And, of course, we can prove that this converges, right? All of our A sub N's. Let's maybe jot that down in here. Uh, let's use green. The A sub N's look like, you know, some K, you know, the nth derivative. Let me replace that. It's going to be the nth derivative derivative evaluated zero over n factorial and that's what these guys are and we could show by ratio test so by ratio test that limit is zero by ratio test you know, a sub n converges okay so the series will converge uh, for all x so let's move on do another example here i'll just look right at example five and you'll see why the binomial series is so interesting Okay, so let's find the, find the power series for the cube root of 1 plus x. So this is a power series. That means we could just use a few of these terms and do an approximation. Okay, so this, so our f of x is 1 plus x to the 1 third power. That's a binomial. And so applying our binomial series to this, this is a binomial with k equals 1 third. And so we could just jump right into this and say f of x equals 1 plus, you know, k, but k is 1 third x plus 1 third times 1, oops, 1 third minus 1 times x squared over 2 factorial plus 1 third times 1 third minus 1 times 1 third minus 2 times x cubed over 3 factorial. And, you know, dot, dot, dot on this. And let's see if we could figure this out. This is going to be negative 2 thirds. And this is going to be negative 5 thirds. Uh, so we have a negative 2 thirds and a negative 5 thirds. And so this series will look like, um, let's see, let's put it over here. We get a 1 plus 1 third x minus 2 ninths over 2, because of the 2 factorial, x squared plus, what do we have here? This is a, a 10, so this is plus 10 over 3, 3, 3 over 9, and a 3 factorial, which is 6 x cubed, uh, oops, uh, 3 times 3 times 3 is not 9, it is 27. Um, let me just write that as 3 cubed. Okay, so these are, and then, you know, plus dot dot dot, but what we have here, interestingly, is a pretty slick way to approximate the cube root of 1 plus x. And if x is small, then these things will be small, and that would be a good approximation. If x is large, then it won't be a good approximation, but as we keep going out in terms, the approximation becomes better and better. Okay, so we are pretty much done with the uh, idea of approximations, power series, Taylor poly polynomials, and all that. And so we see this wonderful table on page page 670 in the book that summarizes everything. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all that stuff you guys learned in this short amount of time. Things that you need to memorize. I know off the bat that the following things will be tested on the AP exam. You need to know this one. You need to know this one and this one. And I'm pretty sure this one, although not entirely positive on that. I'll double check the uh, AP on this. So let me, well, we'll leave that there for your own edification. Memorize those. They will be on the exam. They will be on the AP exam. Let's do one more example of all the cool stuff we can do with now that we have all these tools. Okay, so example six says derive a power series from a basic list. That is a very typical AP problem. Typical AP problem. And, you know, problem in your mathematical life in general. So let's learn how to do this. Let's derive a power series from a given list. So in this particular example, it says, oops, I flipped my page back. It says find the power series Find the power series for cos square root 
of x. Okay, so hopefully you've memorized, you know, maybe from the previous page, how about this, that the power series for cosine is right there. So it is the even powers because cosine is an even function. So hopefully that's sinking in. Okay, let's just write that down. We know that, for instance, cos x is 1. And by the way, we know it has to start with 1 because the cosine curve looks like this. So if you're ever getting unsure about cosine versus sine, remember cosine has to start with 1. And it's alternating SIGNs. So it's 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial plus x to the 6th over 6 factorial. Okay, I could just rattle this off because we've memorized, because I've memorized these, and you should do the same. Okay, so that means the, the function we're interested in, cos root x, we just replace all of these with this. And so we get, it's going to be 1 minus, well, x to the 1 half squared over 2 plus x to the 1 half to the 4th over 4 factorial, whatever that is, and there I go bragging about how well I know this, but I got these signs wrong. Let me change these. This is a minus, a minus, and a plus. Okay, so that means this one needs to be a minus. Okay, so we have a minus x one half to the sixth. Well, of course, that's you know x cubed. I'm just being didactic here. Um, six factorial plus x to the one half to the eighth, which is x to the fourth, over eight factorial. And don't forget our dot, 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 and we should have a dot, dot, dot there. Okay, so that was it. That's pretty cool. With just the Taylor uh, series, we're able to come up with a new series for a new function. Okay, I know I said one more example, but there's actually one more I want to cover. This stuff is so cool, so exciting, that I just don't want to stop. So here we are. We're doing a power series for an integral. Okay, we did the power, we know how to take derivatives and integrals of power series, but now we're going to do that power series to approximate this integral here. And we don't have a convenient antiderivative for that. I don't know how to find the antiderivative for that, at least we can't do it in BC level. So we're going to do the power series, and again, we're just doing the approximations here. So remember the power series for e to the x, one of the ones you need to memorize. So if f of x, f of x is e to the x, then the power series is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, you know, factorial, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, very beautiful, elegant um, power series. And so now we can just replace all those x's with negative x squared. So an e to the negative x squared is 1 minus x squared plus um, negative x squared squared over 2 plus negative x squared cubed over 3 factorial plus negative x squared to the 4th and negative has to be squared as well over 4 factorial and let's write out some of these terms this is going to look like 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th over 2 minus x to the 6th over 6 plus x to the 8th over 4 factorial. And remember, we're taking the integral of this. Okay, so what's this going to look like? Finally, we can do our approximation that the integral of e to the negative x squared dx, and I'll write it as an approximation, is the integral of 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth over two factorial. And let's put one more term in here. I believe it's a minus, right? Minus x to the sixth over three factorial. Okay, and we could, this is the integral from zero to one, zero to one, and this integral equals, oh, so another approximation, but the integral itself equals x minus x cubed over 3, right? We're just integrating a polynomial. Life is good. Life is fun. This is so easy. x to the 5th over 5 times 2 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 times 3 factorial. And this is the first four terms. It's just an approximation, so I'm not going to put a dot, dot, dot. That's what we're doing here. This is the approximation answer. We're taking this from 0 to 1. All the 0 terms drop out, 
And so we are left with this is approximately equal to 1 minus 1 third plus 1 over uh, 10 minus 1 over uh, 7 times 6 is 42. Okay, that turns out to be, I'll just look in the book, the book says this is, a, well this equals, not approximately, this equals uh, 0 0.74 and that according to the alternating series test is, so you know, the next term is our error, so this has an error of less than 0 0.005. Okay, you know, not bad. Pretty good approximation for actually a very quick example. Okay, this is a pretty long uh, video, but it's the last one for this chapter, Root Root, and this is super fascinating stuff. Okay, that's it for now.